Hello and welcome to the computer science track of Mangkaraniwan Developer, more specifically the data representation subtract. So, tuloy lang natin yung lesson na about data types. Ang na-discuss na natin is yung uh, paano tayo nagre-represent ng numbers, pati yung characters natin, and we also introduce the concept of word length. Ngayon, we're going to discuss yung ibang basic na data types. More specifically, yung mga basic data types natin and they're called basic kasi nagkakasya sila dun sa ating word size, yung ating word length ng ating mga computers. So before tayo dumaretso dun sa mga data types na yun, uh, kunting basakalye lang, yung word length, if you're going to look at it sa mga, sabihin natin, mga literature, mga libro, nakaalito rin eh. Kasi may mga libro na mention na yung word size is based dun sa computer mo. So, for instance, you're using a 32-bit computer, ang word size ng computer mo is 32-bit. However, historically speaking, may mga terms rin na related sa word. Kasi, nung panahon na yun, ang sikat na computer is 16-bit. So, sa kanila, ang word para sa ilan languages, for instance, uh, good example would be C, Kung marinig mo word sa C, that would be 16 bits. Then yung double word would be 32 bits, quad word would be 64 bits. Yun lang, nakakalituan lang, pero ang ano lang naman yun eh. We're just going to point it out para hindi kayo malito. Kasi both definitions are correct. But for the sake of this lesson, yung ating basic data types, uh, we're just going to consider yung uh, word length based dun sa computers natin. So, para sa atin, ang word natin is essentially 32 bits or 4 bytes. Anyway, balik tayo dun sa lesson. Apat yung main data types na didiscuss na natin sa lesson na to. Yung unang dalawa na discuss na natin, that is yung characters pati yung numbers. Pero, babalikan natin ng konti yung characters at numbers. Ang character, we already mentioned before na it could be one byte lang, which is yung ASCII. For more complicated characters, we will have to use more than one byte. Yun nga, yun yung mga special encoding types tulad ng UTF, you have your Unicode, and all that. Hindi yun sakop ng lesson na to kasi medyo complicated siya. That would be for another lesson, yung pag-explain ko ano yun. At this point, ang kailangan nyo lang alahanin na yung mga letters natin, yung mga punctuation mark natin, special symbols natin, they could fit in a single word in more most modern computers. So, yun lang yung character. So, ganyan ang problema yan. Basta yung character, kakasya sa isang word. And, ganyan ang problema yan. That's a basic data type kasi kakasya sa word natin. Another data type na Na-discuss na pero we're going to expand a bit rito sa lesson na to is yung numbers. Start tayo with yung uh, pinabasic type na number which is yung integer. Yung integer yun yung mga whole numbers natin, yun yung walang mga fractional part. Yung mga minention natin before pantay yung nagre-represent ng numbers sa uh, bits, integer yun. Kasi yun niya, yung 1 byte that would be an integer from 0 to 255 ang kaya mong i-represent dun sa 8 na bits na yun. Just to expand upon that, meron mga special type na integer which we call yung signed integer. Yung signed integer, yung pinaka last bit niya is reserved to uh, determine kung ano yung sign nung uh, number na yun. Kung positive ba siya or negative. So, if that sign is 1, that would be negative. If that sign is 0, that number is positive. Mahalata nyo na dahil nawala isang bit natin, effectively makakalahati yung ating maximum value. Yung kalahati na yun, mamove dun sa negative part. Kaya dito, yung 1 byte, instead na 0 to 255 siya, ngayon, negative 128 na siya to 127. And hindi lang siya ganun kasimple na, ah, pag dinagdagan na natin ng isang sign bit, pwede na natin siyang gawing negative, basta palitan lang na yung value nung sign bit. Hindi yan ganun. There's a bit of calculation involved. Hindi siya ganun complicated yung 2's complement yan. Pero we're going to move that to another lesson. Kasi 
ayaw natin palitohin yung buhay nyo, pahirapan yung buhay nyo at this point. So, yung point lang rito, in certain integers, meron tayong signed integer, which is yung isang byte is reserved to determine kung positive siya, negative siya, or unsigned integers, which is walang sign, kaya it just zero up to the maximum value. So, yung ating typical na modern integer in a 32-bit computer, ang value ng unsigned na integer can be from 0 to 4 billion. So, ito yung example dito. Ito yung possible na unsigned integer. So, may kita nyo yung dulo niya is 1, but it's still positive. Yung sign naman, that would be niya, kalahate. So, that's negative 2 billion up to positive 2 billion. And this is another example. May kita nyo yung last bit niya is also 1. Pero, in this case, since signed yung integer natin, it's a negative value. So, yun. Sa integers natin, meron tayo ang signed and signed integer. It's not really that hard to understand. Yun yan lang. Alalaan nyo lang, when it's signed, parang makakalahati siya dahil yung maximum niya, dahil nakareserve yung isang bit natin para dun sa sign. And, some uh, integers can be bigger, some integers can be smaller than yung 32-bit natin, pero it's not hard to imagine. Once you understand this, it's not hard to imagine kung ano yung possibilities mo given as a 64-bit integer. So, natapos na tayo dun sa ating characters and integers. Let's move on to the next data type, which is yung floating point numbers. Ito yung mga numbers na may fractional part as opposed to sa integer na whole numbers lang. So, floating point numbers, essentially, approximation lang siya. If you're familiar with yung scientific notation, parang meron kang uh, something times 10 raised to something, baw may mawawala ka dun sa dulo, para may significant digits ka. Ganun rin yung approach rito. So, for example, here is a 32-bit floating point number, or also known as a float, or yung ating single, na uh, single precision na uh, number. So, di sa diagram rin natin, may kita natin kung ano yung itsura niya. So, there's still the sign bit and meron tayong yung exponent part at fractional part. Again, it's like yung scientific notation natin na yung fraction part, ito yung significant digits. Then, yung exponent part, ito yung paano natin papalakihin yung uh, fractional part to make it closer dun sa value na hinahanap hanap natin. And with this approach, kaya natin mag-represent ng value na napakaliit. So, in this case, 10 days to negative 38. That's really small value. In the end, negative na value, it can go positive or negative. Basta napakaliit, napakaliit niyan. That's a fraction. And it can go to a very large number, which is, yun nga, 3.4 times 10 raised to 38. That's a really, really large number. And if you compare this with yung ating 32-bit integer, di amak na malaki yan. Marang sa 32-bit integer, maabot ka lang sa billions. This is a lot larger than a billion. Ang problema lang rito is, while napakalaki yung range siya compared dun sa integer, at kaya niya mag-represent ng fractional part, note na approximation lang to. Yun nga, sabi natin, ginagawa lang natin, is like yung scientific notation na meron tayong significant digits, then rinerase natin siya, minumultiply natin siya to a certain value using yung exponent natin. Now, for example, may kita rin na din sa example na to yung paano nawawala yung parang value niya. For instance, yung pinakasimple is yung 0.1. If you convert that to float, ito yung value niya. So, yan. Binary yan. 32-bit binary. Pero pag kinalculate mo siya, kinonvert mo siya pabalik to a real number, ang value niya is 0 0.10000 something. Yan. Nakikita niya na rito na approximation lang siya and it's not really the exact value. Okay siya for scientific purposes. Kaya kung mara ito, pag kinalculate niya ito at nakuha yung 0 0.1, parang... 0 0.1 meters. Parang yung uh, botal na extra na 0, 0, 0 something. Okay lang yan. Wala namang problema. Parang ano lang yan. Eh? Error lang yan. Parang uh, nag-measure ka. Parang speck of dust lang yan. So, walang problema yan for scientific problems. And essentially, most problems that require yung fractions, 
hindi siya problema yung mga precision errors and loss of precision na yun. Pero in some cases, kailangan mo yung exacto na value. Hindi advisable gumamit ng floating point numbers. For example, sa pera, hindi, hindi pwede. Hindi pwede na magkaroon tayo ng butal and or kulang. Kaya, hindi mo ginagamit yung floating point numbers doon. Later na na i-discuss kung ano yung mga possible na data type na pwede mong gamitin para sa pera. But, just something to keep in mind, floating point natin, ginagamit siya for normal calculations involving uh, ating fractional part sa ating mga scientific calculations and all that. Pero sa pera, you probably shouldn't do that. Kung hindi ka umabot ng million, you might be able to use it, but Stay away from it when you're dealing with something that requires exact precision. So, before mo tayo mag-move on dun sa ating mga ibang data types, mention ko lang itong 64-bit na version ng ating floating point, which we would call yung ating double. Bakit ko ito yung mention? Well, mahal na nyo rito, parang dinoble lang natin yung size niya, laki ng difference ng range niya. So, from 10 raised to 38, naging 10 raised to 308 yung kanyang limit. And when you're dealing with scientific calculations, most of the time, you're going to use double over float. Kasi, kaya naman ng mga processors natin, kaya naman ng programming languages natin, it's rare for you to use yung single precision na float, yung float lang na normal na float lang. Kaya, yun. And you're using your programs. Kadalasan when you need a fractional part, isang number na may decimals, Kadalasan ang gamit natin double. Minsan lang natin na gamit yung float when we're programming. Anyway, so yun lang naman yung ating floating point. It's an approximation. Don't use it when you're dealing with money. But for most cases, it's just fine. Yung next na data type natin is yung boolean. Yung boolean is true or false. Uh, it's named after George Boole, the guy who formulated yung boolean algebra and with boolean algebra as you would see in the program structure track yung mga operations natin doon it forms the foundation of how computers and programs work anyway yung boolean true or false lang yan and you would notice na it can be represented by a single bit ang problema sa computers hindi natin kaya gamitin yung bit na mag-isa Kaya nga may word size tayo, kaya nga may, may byte tayo. Kaya, when we're storing a boolean in a single byte, malaki yung space na ginagastos niya. Kaya, yung implementation ng boolean is dependent sa language. Or kung sino man mag-implement niya. Implementation dependent yan. Walang standard na implementation for boolean. For example, sa C, ang gamit niya na boolean is yung integer. Pag zero yung integer, that's false. Kung hindi siya zero, hindi siya false. So, true siya. And so on. But, for the most part, kung kailan nyo malaan boolean, ang boolean is, it can be true or false. Kaya, huwag nyo nang problemahin yun. And, obviously, it would fit in a word length. Huwag nyo nang problemahin yung uh, space space yun. Let the programming language mismo yung mga problema dun. And finally, we have yung ating last na basic data type, which is yung pointer. Yung pointer, that would be the subject for the next lesson. Kasi it forms the foundations of reference data type. So, yun lang yung mga data types natin. We have your characters, yung ating integers, yung ating floating point, yung boolean. Then, yung pointers. Uh, bago na i-wrap up tong lesson na to, mention ko lang yung concept ng primitive data types. At this point, hindi nyo kayong problemahin kung ano yung difference ng primitive data type sa basic data type. Sa atin, ang dinefine na yung basic data type, yun yung mga data na nagkakasya dun sa word length. Ang um, primitive data type is somewhat similar and most basic data types are primitive data types. Pero at this point, huwag nyo nang problemahin yun. Parang yung ating program and function yun. At this point, huwag nyo nang problemahin yung difference ng function at program. They're basically the same at this point. Kaya, yun lang. Huwag nyo problema yan. Later na natin na mention kung ano yung difference sa primitive at yung ating other data type that is yung reference data type. But, for this case, huwag nyo problema yan. Primitive data types are basic data types. Anyway, next lesson natin is yung ating pointers as I mentioned a while ago and yung mga reference data types na may connection dun sa pointer na yan.